Hello, my name is Ron St. Dennis and I'm with Acuity Solutions. Thanks for watching this video and thanks for visiting acuityinc.com. I thought that I'd create a short video to demonstrate and discuss a couple of tips and tricks that I've learned regarding setting and managing customer defaults in NX11. A few things that I'd like to discuss and uh, demonstrate during this uh, presentation are what are the real differences between a customer defaults and, and uh, preferences? How do you find a customer default? How do you manage customer defaults, import, export? How do you set and modify a drafting standard? And how do you share customer defaults once you get them set up the way you want them? Okay, let's get started. The first thing that I'd like to talk about are the differences between um, preferences and use and customer defaults. Uh, preferences are session bounds. Uh, that means that they're set during an NX session and they stay in effect until you leave that session. Once you exit NX and come back in, those preference settings are basically gone. Uh, with one exception. Some preferences uh, get uh, set in the uh, Windows registry and those will stay in effect uh, with that current setting until you change it. Uh, so all other preferences uh, will generally uh, disappear when you leave NX and come back in. So preferences of course are found here under file preferences and uh, these all have their groups and subgroups here. Uh, let's uh, look at user interface, for instance. Uh, so th there's, there's, it's a group. Uh, the group is user, user interface, and then you have these subgroups on the left. Okay. Customer defaults are under file, utilities, customer defaults. So the layout is quite different here. You have all the groups and subgroups are listed on the left here. Uh, and this can be a pretty daunting task uh, to find a preference or a, um, a user uh, customer default that uh, applies to a given preference uh, in the preferences. So uh, there are a couple of, uh, there is a, a very good uh, dialogue that will help you find them. And that's called find default up here in the right hand corner. Uh, this is a very handy uh, comprehensive search. Uh, you, once again, this is like a command finder. Uh, sometimes less is more here. And uh, if you don't uh, get carried away with the words, uh, you type in a couple words and you'll find what you're looking for. Uh, so uh, the other thing I want to point out about this, a little handy uh, thing to know is that uh, if you're curious as to what uh, customer defaults uh, came into effect or came into being at any at a giving um, uh, NX release, uh, you can just type in the release number here and hit enter like a 9.0.3 and it'll tell you all of the customer defaults uh, that where they were uh, either came into being or they were uh, significantly enhanced or modified. So that's a good thing, a uh, good thing to know. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, it doesn't take uh, well, let's uh, let's search for uh, something like decimal places because I want to I want to show you something here. Let's talk about scope uh, shortly. Uh, so scope is you'll see that you have there's two uh, basically two scopes here, uh, part and session. So when it's a part scope, that means that it um, if there's a part. Uh, uh, coming into play when you enter NX, it will not be modified. Uh, the defaults will not be modified by your, by a save customer default. If it's session, uh, they will it will be modified. So anytime you're using a template part uh, or 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 a, a template part of your own or one of the out of the box template parts, uh, these these customer defaults don't change. So this becomes an item of confusion for a lot of new users because they they might change this customer default and and when they f say file new and they grab uh, even the modeling has a template part associated with it, uh, they'll see that it didn't change. And this is one in particular. These um, um, decimal places in the, under gateway user interface. Uh, so these are the number of decimal places in the dialog boxes. And it affects uh, the measure distance. So uh, this is one that gets changed from time to time. And uh, if you uh, are using a template part, um, it will, it, you have to change it in a template part file. So in other words, um, uh, the only time that this really uh, gets modified by the customer defaults is when you're using a blank part. If you say file, new, uh, blank part, that has there's no template part involved with that. You're going right into NX uh, bare bones.
So that's when uh, this will take into effect. So the the answer to that or the solution to that is that you want to you want to modify if you want to change this uh, this preference or this customer default, you want to do this inside of a template part, all your template parts. So uh, session, any one of the session settings, of course, they will be uh, they will will be set when you when you go into NX, whether you're using a template part or not. So another thing I'd like to point out here is that uh, when you're when you're looking for a particular um, preference or customer default uh, in this list, uh, if you look down here uh, under description, there'll be um, uh, there'll be some explanation of what's going on or what this thing applies to. So this is a good a good place to look for it here. Uh, it'll give you a little more information, and uh, sometimes this will help you uh, select the uh, the right one. So uh, any one of these, if you just double click on any one of these, it'll take you right to that. Uh, um, right to that uh, customer default and here it is under user interface decimal places right there so let's go back to find because I want to uh, I want to show you uh, one of those that is actually set in the Windows registry uh, and so this happens to be this one. If you click on this, it says right here, this option specifies the appearance of your NX session. The corresponding preference option to this customer default has a value stored in the user's registry. This default value therefore only influences the initial value for the setting. So once you uh, load up NX the initial time, it sets the registry and it stays set uh, at that value until you, uh, until you change it. So the other command that I want to show you uh, in the customer defaults dialog is the manage current settings dialog. So from here you can uh, you can do uh, two or three different things. One of them is that you can delete you can delete any of the, this keeps track of all of the uh, customer defaults that you've changed uh, that are uh, non non standard out of the box. And so uh, you can uh, you can just pick one of these and uh, and delete it. Uh, just keep in mind when you do that. And it'll go back to the out-of-the-box condition. When you do that, you have to come back here and you have to say apply or OK, uh, because if you don't, it won't uh, it won't do anything until you until you say OK here. And then it'll give you the message that you have to uh, restart NX to have it become active. And so when you go back in there, you see that that one is in fact uh, is deleted, and and you will see uh, I. I deleted the decimal places. And it was uh, it was at three uh, and, it, and the default is four. So it went back to the to its original setting. So the other thing you can do from here is you can uh, you can export uh, a default file. So uh, I've already have one here. Uh, I'm just going to overwrite it. Uh, and, and I'll show you what that looks like. <clears throat> so basically, it creates a DPV file, and, and it's basically an XML formatted file with all the all the changes uh, embedded in it. So I'll, I'll show you a little interesting thing that happens here. Uh, when you go back here and you import. Uh, and here it gives you a report of what happened here. So it says uh, it didn't import any settings because because right now all all the settings in the default file match, and that's what it says right here. Total settings already set to the same value and lock status. So it's it's a, like a merge routine when it brings when it uh, reads them in. So uh, if you if you wanted to share this file with the counterpart, uh, you could do that, and it would merge it in. Uh, in with what they already have. So one of the most commonly uh, used uh, customer defaults for me anyway are uh, is in the drafting standard. So if you want to change uh, the uh, a lot of the preferences in the uh, detailed drafting uh, uh, segments, uh, you want to do it from here. So you will go to uh, under under customer defaults, drafting, general setup. Uh, here's your drafting standing here, standard here. So what this is, it has a list of here of all the drafting standards that you uh, imported when you uh, when you 
installed NX, uh, and I usually pick one that's closest to what I want, and, and then I'll uh, say customize standard here. Now, uh, keep in mind that you cannot uh, customize and save uh, an out-of-the-box uh, drafting standard. Uh, what you can do is you can customize an out-of-the-box drafting standard and save as a different name. And so that's that's basically the workflow that I use. So I, I go in here to customize. I'll, I'll f fix what I want to fix. Uh, normally uh, under dimension, there's a bunch that I like to fix here because I like to uh, I like to customize my uh, customer defaults, my drafting standard, so that most of the dimensions that I create uh, fit the uh, drafting standard and then um, and then on the ones that are uh, have something a little bit different I will change the uh, preference settings on that particular dimension uh, it's a lot quicker to do it that way than the other way around so uh, under text uh, orientation load Get location is one of the biggies for me I like to have all my text in line with the dimension line and also horizontal <clears throat> under units I also increase my uh, my uh, number of decimal places for four uh, to four because I'm, I came from aerospace and so a lot of my stuff uh, goes out to the fourth place. And so when you get everything in here, uh, of course, there's a uh, uh, multitude, same as uh, drafting preferences. There's uh, there's a lot of them here. So uh, and and um, if you uh, uh, whole call outs and, and everything is in here. So and there's number of tabs on each one of these. So I, I try to get this uh, to re, to uh, give me basically uh, uh, what I want uh, in, in the most common instances, and then and then I'll change the settings on the specific ones uh, that are that don't uh, meet that requirement. So then uh, we'll do a save as here, and I'm just going to call this my underscore ISO. So. Uh, when you do that, uh, and you and you'll see up here it says customize drafting standard my ISO. Okay, so we cancel out of this. It puts us back into the customer defaults dialog, and you'll see that it's already changed here. And we can tell that's true uh, when we go to uh, manage current settings. You'll see that it is in fact uh, one of the settings that's been changed, and it's changed in my ISO. Uh, but you'll notice that it says pending here, and the reason it says pending here, and it doesn't have a, a date on it, uh, is because we haven't applied it or said okay here. So we're going to apply it here. Okay, and it gives you the message that you have to exit NX to have it come into effect. So I'm not going to get out of exit NX and come back in, but I am going to show you something else that's handy. So if you do exit NX and and um, you go back in and you're start making a drawing and you're creating dimensions and you're thinking, wait a minute, this is not what I asked for my customer defaults. There's a shortcut to get there. Uh, if you go to drafting preferences under general setup workflow, you'll see in the bottom here, you can inherit uh, your settings from preferences, customer defaults or selected objects. So if you select on customer defaults, hit the inherit load from settings source button here and say, okay, uh, it'll inherit all the settings from the customer defaults drafting standard. So you've uh, created and saved a, a bunch of customer defaults, and now you want to make them available uh, to other people in your group. You want to share them, or you make them, want them available, available to other machines that are logged onto your network. Uh, so you can uh, put them on a shared drive and simply set a, uh, uh, a an environment variable inside of your UGII underscore env dot dat file in your UGII folder. Uh, and when you go into an exit, it'll automatically look there for them. So how does it do that? Uh, and where is that? So let's go to file, help, look at your log file, and if you do a search here, a control F, and you say, I want to look for user underscore defaults, it'll tell you exactly where the, the default location is for uh, uh, your customer defaults at a user level. Now there are two other levels. Um, there's a, a group and a site level, uh, but they're usually controlled by by IT. Uh, so uh, you can simply take this environment variable in your UGII environment dat file and point it to any a valid fully qualified path name. So you'll see where it exists right now. It's under C users run app data local Siemens NX11 NX11 user dpv. So this looks familiar because we saved, we exported them. So you could export them as well and just save those exported files uh, to, uh, to a uh, common location on a shared drive and point this environment variable to that. So let's, uh, let's just take a look, quick look there and we'll go to, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
we'll go to our C drive. Uh, users. Your username. App data. So this is where all the temporary uh, application data is saved. Uh, local. Siemens has its own folder here. And there'll be a folder for a much for the other uh, a lot of the other modules and um, and versions. So here we have NX9, 10, and 11. We're working with 11, so it'll be under here. So here you'll see this NX110 underscore user dot DPV. That's the that's the customer defaults that you set uh, along with the NX XL, XL, XSL file. Sorry. And also you'll notice that there's um, there's a couple of drafting standards uh, files for the drafting standard that you set. One is the um, DPV file and also another XSL file. So you could cop you could copy these uh, and put them in a shared drive location, and then you could go to your uh, environment variable, and that's under C <clears throat> program files. Siemens, NX11, UGII, and under here, you're looking for this one, UGII underscore ENV dot that. The others are defaults and uh, are used internally to uh, load all the uh, standard and uh, base uh, environment. But this is the one you, you can edit. <clears throat> so if you go in here and edit it with your, uh, with your uh, text editor, you see that it tells you exactly what it should be for. This file should be used to override any standard NX environment variables. So you could simply paste this in here, put an equal sign, and put your fully qualified path name to your folder on a shared drive. And the next time you go into NX, it'll it'll pick it right up. So that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching, and thanks for visiting acuityinc.com.